Hi there, I wanted to do a current best practices for ChatGPT lesson. Um, I've been using ChatGPT for over a year now. Uh, it's changed a fair bit in the time since I started using it. When I first started using it, there was basically just the concept of a chat conversation where you would prompt the, uh, the model with a prompt containing text and then it would use uh, its sort of predictive algorithms to generate what it thinks is the best response for what it is that you're asking for. Um, which, uh, when people sort of, from my observations, when people talk about ChatGPT online, a lot of the discussion is pretty simple as far as the ways that people use ChatGPT. Generally, it's it's not it doesn't go any more any further in complexity than just ask for something, and usually without a whole lot of detail, and then see what you get back. Um, and these text to text or text to image um, generations, uh, you know, have certainly been buzzworthy and gotten people's attentions. But as far as practical work purposes. Um, I've found that you have to put a lot of thought and care into setting up your conversation um, in advance in order to really maximize what you get out of ChatGPT. So that's the purpose of this lesson is kind of talk about the current state of ChatGPT and the functions that the options that you have as far as configuring it um, at the conversation level and also at the sort of global level. Um, and I'll give you some examples of how I use it and, and sort of use cases that I find are, are really beneficial. So just to kind of, what you're seeing on screen uh, while I talk here is my lesson plan. Um, and full disclosure, I didn't write this. I had the uh, model generate this based on uh, a prompt that I put in. Um, so just to sort of pull back the curtain, well, actually, no, let's come back to that, but let's sort of talk about the basic moving parts as far as customizing ChatGPT. Uh, and that's primarily, uh, using memory effectively and using system prompts. Um, if you go behind the scenes in ChatGPT and look at the developer API, so just for those who aren't familiar. ChatGPT Plus, which is what we're looking at here, which is sort of the front-facing user interface for general public, non-programmers, to be able to access and use ChatGPT and, and its various different models. Um, and you can, there's a whole bunch of different levels, and the current top tier one is 4.0, um, which is available both in free and in paid. Uh, you just get more use of it in the paid access right now, is my understanding. Um, so. Uh, but regardless of which model you choose, and there's different costs and, and, and whatnot sort of associated with them. Like I said, you, if you want to tackle the very best one, 4.0 is currently it. Uh, but the other two things that were sort of added over time, one which was fairly early, a few months or maybe half a year or so into the public uh, ChatGPT app, uh, is system prompts. Um, and from the developer perspective, uh, there's a you can provide any conversation with a single system prompt. Uh, essentially, every time you do a chat conversation API call, there's an array of previous conversation that you're passing. And most of those are either the user or the AI agent. Um, and the user and agent conversation is generally a back and forth, that the user says something and then the agent responds, and the user responds to that, and then the agent responds to that. And every time uh, you go and ask for a, a, a model response, uh, this ChatGPT Plus web app will take all of your previous conversation and pass it as an array of information to that uh, developer call, and then it'll display the results, which will be the model's prompt value. Um, but uh, you can add a system prompt at the start of the conversation that sort of defines the parameters of and, and the expectations of what this chat conversation is going to be about, and you can like I said, you can sort of narrow the focus down to something very specific by being be very descriptive. You can also be very descriptive as sort of a, here's the way that I expect you to respond. Um, by default, it tends to respond in a fairly conversational, 
relatively unstructured fashion. Um, and so I've made changes in my memory to sort of uh, program it to give me a little bit more professional uh, and structured response. Um, and I'll review that in a little bit of what exactly I put in. But uh, basically, that's kind of what m memory is used for now. But in before memory came around, that's how you use a system prompt. Uh, so now memory came along earlier this year and added this sort of global uh, storage spot where you can store any sort of information that you want um, and that every conversation can see. So now uh, the, the real downside to the using this tool before memory was every conversation was sort of a silo unto itself. And if you wanted to bring information from one conversation to another, you had to manually copy it and paste it into the new conversation and then tell it why you wanted this information. Now you're able to actually tell it, okay, here's some information I want you to store in a memory. And once you've stored it in memory, any conversation that runs that you generate responses from, even older conversations, can go into that memory and see what's there and, and use that information to sort of tailor its response. Um, so now with memory in place, system prompts become something that's more focused purely on the conversation about how do you want to uh, change this individual conversation versus sort of your overall uh, uh, sort of project level. Uh, and that's kind of where I find, um, where I've been finding a personal lot of use with memory is to be able to sort of set up a concept of this is the project that I'm working on. Here's sort of the state of where I'm at. Here's maybe my milestones and, and uh, um, maybe a timeline and you can put a whole lot of sort of project level language in there and then anytime I need to sort of dig into detail on a specific task or a topic I, all of that basic context is there and it'll use that when it's formulating its responses and then system prompts are going to be used purely to uh, tweak a single conversation generally let me take a step back okay so let's work through my lesson plan here and we'll kind of I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about as we go through so first thing, we talk about using memory effectively. So what do we put in our memory? Um, so these are sort of some good highlights. So critical recurring information that aids in continuity across conversations. So this would include project details, personal preferences, important facts, and specific user instructions. Uh, so in my, uh, okay, let me go to the other two points, then we'll talk about what I do. Uh, Avoid overly detailed or transient information that may change frequently as it can clutter memory and reduce clarity. Update memory only with information that is verified and reviewed to maintain accuracy and relevance. Um, so the best practices for that, regular review and update stored information to ensure it remains accurate and useful. Use memory strategically to provide, improve the coherence of responses and maintain context, especially for long-term projects or recurring tasks. And clearly specify what should be stored and how it should be structured to avoid ambiguity and ensure easy retrieval. Okay, so let me go into my memory and we, let's talk more in depth about how we use memory. So if I go into here, go to personalization, I can, you can see a little sort of preview of what's on memory and you can even turn it off if you don't want to use it, but I absolutely do. Uh, go to memory and so now you can see all the different items that are stored in here. Each one uh, is sort of separated in paragraphs and you can junk individual things if you want. So you can directly manage your memory using the user interface. You can also instruct the model to update or remove or change information that's in memory and it'll happily do that for you if you don't want to kind of go in here and micromanage. Um, and the other thing you can't do is edit the text in here. You can delete it, but you can't uh, manually change the text. That's generally you have to work through the model to do that. But, um, so uh, what I've got stored in memory right now, uh, these first few items here are all sort of project related um, and uh, they're instructions about sort of the priorities and the information that I want to have on sort of overall thinking about so that whenever it's responding, I want to, uh, so I'm working on a project around government automation and how do we sort of identify systems for it, for, automation, uh, plan out the migration approach and, and, and just what are the benefits of automating all this sort of stuff. So, so that's kind of uh, 
what a lot of this context is is in here. So establish priorities and goals for automation, do planning and resource allocation. So we want to uh, develop detailed budget, allocate resources, uh, identify key stakeholders, uh, selecting technology and vendors, developing developing an ethical framework. Again, these are all sort of highlighted points, and uh, maybe I'll go into the more depth details on this when I do another video on my project. But just to kind of high level it, um, a lot of uh, any, any sort of high level project goals uh, or like I said, timeline, uh, milestones, just anything that you're, you've got a project, regardless of whether it's say like a, 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 you're developing a new piece of software or you're just trying to build an extension to your house. Uh, you know, anything that's related to that project, you can store in memory and then as you sort of work through the different steps of the different parts that you need to do, you can have specific conversations, but they'll all always have this sort of overall context available to them. Um, so here's another thing about, uh, you know, instructions for ensuring accurate and reliable data, uh, objectives, priority areas, data integrity. There's a whole bunch of sort of basic points. Uh, so other things that you can do in memory, which I also find extremely useful is provide uh, examples and templates for it to follow for common requests that you have of it. So I often ask for it to generate prompts for me, uh, whether it's an image prompt or a text prompt. And um, so what I've given it is in a memory instruction to say, I prefer them formatted in a code sample format so that there's a copy and paste button on the screen that just highlights the text of the prompt. So I can quickly grab that and put it in a new conversation. Um, and so I give it a nice uh, example of what that structure text should look like. Uh, so here's a image prompt and it's in JSON format. For text prompts, it's just a paragraph. So it's in plain text format and it'll actually generate, anytime it generates a prompt, it does it using this syntax, which is very nice. Um, a very strong point actually on ChatGPT is it's really good at following templates. Um, so if you've got to structure your information or you're trying to work on a project where you're taking maybe existing data in a particular structure and you want to convert it to something else, maybe a, like a JSON document or uh, uh, an HTML page or, or however way you, custom way you want to sort of structure the information, as long as you provide an example of here's what the original structured data looks like, here's what that data looks like transformed, um, it'll happily transform as much stuff as you want to throw at it after that uh, and it'll get it accurate in 100 percent most of the time at least from my experience um, so uh, i also have some personal stuff in here so i am a typewriter hobbyist who owns a collection machine learning how to repair them not very relevant most of the stuff that i'm doing but i'm kind of using this memory sort of general purpose um, this one is one that i did a video a year or so ago, I think, around sort of instructions using system prompts of how I wanted to customize it to respond. Um, so this is kind of the e evolution of that. Now I store it in memory, so I don't, I do, I can free up my system prompts for, like I said, things that are more specific to a particular conversation. This is more sort of my general what I want from it to what I want from the AI, uh, from the model when it responds to me. Um, so clarity and directness. Uh, straightforward to the point communication without rhetorical questions. Uh, I want it to be professional and accessible, suitable for professional context and maintain a respite, respectful and polite demeanor. Um, I want the style to be instructive and informative, often including detailed explanations and instructions and show enthusiasm for innovation and future oriented thinking. Uh, the user's approach is conversational, inv inviting dialogue and emphasizing collaboration and openness. Guidelines for an LLM to emulate the user's voice include using clear and direct language, maintaining a professional yet approachable tone, providing detailed explanations where relevant, emphasizing the importance of innovation and encouraging interactive and collaborative communication. So all of that both sort of instructs it how to respond, but also if I wanted to respond that sort of mimics my speaking style, I've come up with some sort of basic guidelines there, which is that last sentence in that paragraph, which is I want it to be, which is very similar to the way that I've kind of instructed it to respond by, uh, on its own. But um, a couple of other things I've added in, uh, numeric ID for each memory, starting at one and incrementing one for every new memory. Um, oh, I don't even know if that's, I don't think that's actually, that's not being used. I'm going to trash that. Yeah, that's not being used anymore. I'm going to trash that. 
It does. This was me playing around with seeing if I could actually get it to use a um, a JSON structure or some sort of st or, or, or a YAML structure to be able to um, store information, including things like timestamps and stuff. Because when you don't, when I think about memory from a database perspective, which is you know coming as a programmer, I often you know you would use a database to store information. There's a lot of meta information about information you store into a table uh, or into a non table structure if you're dealing with like NoSQL or, or, or things like that. Um, things like created update, uh, having a log or a, maybe a history of what changed so that if you update a value, you want to have the old one retained somewhere. I was kind of playing around to see if I could get it to sort of do that type of database-y type meta work without with a little bit of prompting. And I haven't been very successful with that, unfortunately. Um, it's definitely not quite at that level of sophistication of what you can do with memory but maybe in the future so anyway i just removed that while we're talking but uh here's a, another example of a to-do list um I, this does actually work as far as structuring memory i think um oh now i've got some duplicate stuff in here too um so this is another part of where they talk about sort of reviewing and auditing. I could probably come in here and clean this up because I definitely had some duplicate stuff in here. And and I know that there is, you know, adding text into your memory, the amount of information in your memory will affect, I believe, your token limit for your conversations. So you don't want to have pages and pages of information in memory. You do want to keep it more at point form and sort of, you know, keep it isolated to the simple parts of the most important stuff that you want to sort of keep track of. Uh, and then anything else would be tailored to the conversation generally. Um, system prompts, so now that we have memory, um, system prompts can, like I said, can now be sort of more focused. And system prompts in, in ChatGPT Plus, um, if you go to customize ChatGPT, this is where you find them in effect, actually, I've got old stuff. This is sort of where I used to put this uh, sort of guiding information. So now I'm gonna take all that out and save but uh, let me go back here so essentially um, what would you like to know about you to provide better responses and how would you like it to respond this behind the scenes I don't know quite why they've split this into two things I guess um, it this might just be sort of their initial attempt at kind of customizing the model and they thought having these as two separate things about talking about you and then talking about what how would you like to respond as sort of two separate texts but if, behind the scenes it's essentially taking both of the bodies of text that you put in here and making it a single system prompt um, but in either case uh, that's really what these are now for if you, I would highly recommend store your instructions of how you want to work in memory and then you simply use your system prompts on a conversation by conversation basis or if you're working on sort of a current workflow that you want to sort of set up a series of conversations all with sort of the same sort of setup, you could use that um, customized ChatGPT one time and then just run every conversation. As long as you have this enabled for new chats, it'll employ these instructions every conversation that you start. Uh, so with system prompts, structuring conversations is, is primarily what you use it for. So use system prompts to set the tone, style, and rules of engagement for the conversation. This helps to maintain consistency, aligns the model's responses with the user's expectations. Uh, begin with a clear, concise system prompt that outlines the conversation's objectives, preferred language style, and any specific requirements. Uh, so for example, you're an assistant helping with the development of democratic tools. Please respond directly and formally, eliminating preambles and summaries, adopt a logistic paragraphing, focusing on each paragraph on a single idea, and apply numbering to titles and paragraphs, use footnotes for clarity. So that's kind of a nice, and that actually would be a very good system prompt as far as a general purposes one that I'm using. It's for, for cues pretty close to what I have in memory, which is where it generated this from. Um, so regardless of how you're setting up your config, the other thing to sort of talk about is the difference between a short versus a long conversation. Um, my workflow that I've sort of uh, have evolved now is one where I tend to have top level conversations which might be longer in depth where we're sort of working out a general process and workflow 
But then when I want to sort of drill down into the details of each of the specific items in that workflow, I will uh, start a new conversation and use those short conversations. They'll generally be shorter conversations to kind of address the specific things that I'm worried about or interested in. And then I'll either get it to store the results of that into memory or come back into the long conversation and, and paste the uh, sort of summary into that and then sort of work, continue on. Um, long conversations, um, Oh yeah, so short conversations are beneficial for quick queries, troubleshooting, or obtaining specific information. They're efficient and reduce cognitive load. So quick advice, medium problem solving, or brief updates. Um, again, like I said, short conversations are great when I'm just sort of wanting offing a little brainstorming idea, or, or like I said, if I'm trying to work in detail on something, but I know that the overall length is gonna blow out my token limit on my long conversation, what I will generally do is sort of take, spin off the smaller pieces into smaller conversations, sort of work through to completion and then bring the summary back into the long conversation and maybe work on from there. Um, so long conversations are ideal for in-depth discussions, complex problem solving, and project planning. They allow for deeper understanding and continuity. Uh, so again, best cases, best use cases, detailed project planning, comprehensive consultations, and long-term collaboration. So when you're using Chat GPT in this sort of advanced setup, um, you want to have, like I said, sort of high level planning conversations that would then spawn off, you know, sort of child conversations. The one thing that's really lacking in the ChatGPT Plus interface right now that I kind of wish it had was this ability to spin off a child conversation and have that relationship stored within the user interface. Uh, as of today, uh, was it June 20th, 2024? Um, Currently, the memory is only, your conversations are still stored in a, a, a single dimensional array. So it's just a big long list with timestamps, sort of sorted by timestamp, with the ones at the top being the ones that you most recently used. So it might not be the newest conversation, but whichever conversation you most recently prompted a response from a model on will be sort of top of the list and then they'll go down. And the naming is automatic. Um, by default, uh, but when you're organizing this sort of stuff, generally what I would do is um, manually change the names of the conversations and put prefix them with maybe a numbering hierarchy. So number one would be the top, or I could just call it top, uh, and then sort of 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 would be the sub conversations, and then 1.2.1 would be a sub conversation off of that second one, and so on and so forth. So you could manually do that right now. Um, to my knowledge, you can't instruct ChatGPT to uh, customize the titles of conversations, although I should play with that. I haven't tried that in a, in a few months. Um, but like I said, to my knowledge, unfortunately, it's still a manual process. But if you do put a little bit of planning in place and you are conscious about naming your conversations, especially the ones that you know are going to stick around, you're going to come back to as reference um, and use some sort of a pattern, uh, it goes a long way to helping you sort of keep track of these conversations and work, or, you know, flip in between them as you need to, as you're kind of going through your day to day. Uh, so uh, planning execution st strategies, use memory to store key project details, milestones and updates, ensuring consistency across conversations. Uh, start each conversation by referencing the current state of the project and any recent changes or updates to maintain continu continuity. Uh, so uh, yeah, you definitely wanna, like I said, you wanna have your project information stored in memory um, or in your system prompts, if it's more relevant there, uh, maybe it's not universal, but it's only kind of within a certain workflow. Maybe you put it there and then take it out when you're done in your system prompts, I mean. And then the other thing you want to do, especially if you do have that information in memory, is to instruct it when you're responding. I want you to refer to the information related to this project in memory uh, and use the instructions there to craft a response. Um, I find that's helpful uh, when you are very clear. And, and this is another thing. The clearer you are, the more specific you are with what you're expecting of it, including to the point of giving it literal examples, especially if you have a, a certain format of the way you want to respond. Or like I said, if it's taking some information and transforming it to a different uh, structure, having that sort of example of here's what an original source is going to look like. Here's what I expect the output to be 
it can usually run from there and then automatically anything you pass it as long as it matches that structure that you gave it as an example um, it can easily map it to that uh, to that new new structure and you can whip through uh, template building and document building really quickly doing this sort of an approach um, so some example strategies store project goals deadlines and key deliverables in memory use each conversation to discuss specific tasks track progress and make necessary adjustments um, okay uh, ensuring best results um, again clarity of goals and objectives clearly define your goals and objectives at the beginning of each conversation um, and 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 this is really where you need to hone your skills if you don't think you're a good communicator using chat gpt at least for me i found is an excellent way of honing your communication skills and being more precise and accurate with your language you know trying to avoid terms that can be interpreted in multiple different ways um the more like i said the more precision you can use in your side of the conversation the more precision you're going to get from the model um there's a concept in computer programming called garbage in, garbage out. If you feed the model garbage, you're going to get garbage as a result. And uh, that includes being too vague in what it is that you're requesting. When you ask, uh, you know, like I said, this is sort of um, like the image generation is a perfect example from, from my perspective. Image generation at this time can get you some incredible visuals, but um, it's the nature of the way that interface is defined, it only allows for very sort of broad strokes of detail as what you can tell it as an image to generate. You can't specifically get down to like pixel by pixel details or even um, talk about spatial relationships within the image to say, put a circle over to the left and then over to the right and below it, put a rectangle and make each one a certain thickness and, and that sort of thing. You might get some results, but my, from my experience, it, it never does anything accurately uh, unlike the text prompting where you can get it to generate text I can get it to generate something that's 90% to 100% right most cases of what I've tried to use and, and, and I said, like I said as long as I'm very clear about what I've done and what I want um, that approach is 100% most of the time uh, and when it's not it's usually because I accidentally been unclear in my goals and my objectives um, so extremely extremely important um, is this part being very clear on what it is and being very specific and and watching your language um, so uh, let's talk about some common use cases um, project planning um, so like I said if you're working on a complex project, ChatGPT can do so much of the heavy lifting, especially around um, structuring the overall plan, putting together sort of the boilerplate and, and sort of the filler. So project planning allows you to, you, you can use memory to store project details and you can use system process structure the response. And I said, it's extremely useful for any type of project that, that, that has long amounts of sort of preparation and planning and maybe technical steps. Um, it's really good at kind of generating a lot of that, especially if it's common knowledge work. Um, if you're, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm a typewriter enthusiast, it's not going to tell me step by step accurately how to disassemble a Remington Superwriter from the 1950s. Um, but uh, if you're asking for like uh, planning a uh, employee outing for a company or working on a software project or working on like I said an extension to your home anything that's got a lot of moving parts and a lot of complexity um, you can be as specific about what you know and then ask it to sort of fill out the rest and if there's things you don't like you can always kind of go back and forth and get it to really fill in the detail but if you're not using a model like ChatGPT to do a lot of this sort of day-to-day -day documentation work, you're missing out on a huge savings in time and effort. Um, because anything that's, if it's, I guess sort of as a basic philosophy, what I found is if it's 
laborious, but not really mentally t challenging for you to do a task, um, get ChatGPT to do it. It can probably handle it as long as you sort of set up the environment correctly. There's a good chance it'll be able to do the vast majority of it for you and you just have to focus on the things that are unique to the situation that you're trying to plan. Um, customer support. Uh, use short conversations to address specific issues quickly. Uh, and this is even just for like uh, personal advice and, and uh, you know, you're trying to maybe you got an issue at home. Maybe there's a, a leaky pipe or something and you just and you've never dealt with this. You know, what do I do? That sort of thing. It's really good at sort of giving you a nice sort of, oh, here's what you need to consider or here's the things that you, that you could do or here's who you need to reach out to. That sort of stuff. It's, it's really good for that kind of thing. In fact, you're already seeing um, many, especially on, on big websites, customer support. You're no longer talking to a human. You're talking to an AI. Uh, when, if you really want to get high level, if you've got like a, uh, com a customer support component to your company and you've got scripts and you've got uh, sort of uh, frequently asked questions and responses and, and you know, a whole lot of documentation that you give out to your support staff. If you're not, you should be taking that information and training a model on it. Um, and that's sort of a, a, a more advanced step than just using ChatGPT plus through this interface. What you'd need to do is to build an application that calls the embeddings API, which is a whole new, whole other uh, API around using these sort of language models. Um, that allows you to give your own customization, customized information to the model first, train it up on all these details is sort of like if you, somebody asks this question this is what you should respond with uh, and once it's been trained then you can sort of expose that trained model into your user interface and people can ask it questions and it should give accurate answers um, at least as accurate as your information is um, so customer support is one of those areas and anybody who's in a customer support job you should be looking for another job uh, because in the next five years it'll be gone um, that's guaranteed there are, like I said, there are. If they're not already gone now, um, there's a huge amount of. Uh, uh, this is one of those huge savings that com bigger companies are definitely going to be embracing. Uh, but eventually, it'll be everybody. Um, research and analysis, another really good use case. Using long conversations for in-depth analysis and comprehensive discussions. So, no matter what it is that you're interested in to research or analyze, um, because of the way these large language models have been trained, they have a pretty good baseline general knowledge across all sorts of areas. Yes, if you're really getting technical and into the weeds in a highly technical profession, you're not going to get quality responses without training it first. Um, but uh, for a lot of basic human needs where you're, you're tr struggling with an issue and you need to kind of think about it, um, often you can get a lot of momentum by just simply describing your problem and seeing what it responds with. Uh, anyway, uh, so setting up conversations. Again, project level information and memory, store detailed project descriptions, key stakeholders, deadlines, and milestones. Um, craft your system and first user prompts. So use system prompts to set the tone and context. Use the first user prompt to provide specific instructions and outline the con conversation's objectives. Um, so they give a nice little example here of you sort of, this is my project. I'm operate, automating government operations. Goals to improve efficiency, increase transparency, ensure fairness. Stakeholders, citizens, government officials, technology vendors, milestones, initial planning, pilot projects, full implementation, deadlines, which quarter for pilot, which quarter for full implementation. Then my system problem in this case is you're assisting with the project on automating that, maintaining a formal tone, focus on clear actionable steps. Again, just kind of very brief. Um, I would definitely go into more detail if this is a real example, but this is just a simple example. And then first user prompt. Please provide a detailed plan for the initial planning phase, introducing stakeholder engagement, resource allocations, and key activities. So if you had this in memory and this set up your system prompt, it's going to use both of those contexts to actually generate that first response. Um, highly, highly useful. Um, in fact, I've now gotten to the point where I don't, even craft my first user prompts. Um, if I know I'm going to start a new conversation, the first thing I'll do is in the previous conversation, 
tell it to, okay, given all this context of what we're talking about, generate the first prompt to start a conversation on this topic. Or uh, say if they've generated a plan using a conversation, create the first prompt to start the conversation around implementing this plan. And then if what I get back matches the parameters of what I want, I just cut and paste, copy and paste it into a new conversation and go from there. Um, so now I find that the only real time I'm crafting a prompt of my own is when the prompts I'm trying to get generated by the model don't quite match and then I'm just sort of tweaking. I'm saying, oh, well, most of that's good, but I'd like a little more detail here or take out that detail that's not necessary um, or, or a combination of things like that. Um, okay, using template examples. Um, again, one of the use cases that I found most valuable so far is simply, and especially as a developer, but this is true for lots of jobs. I've got information structured in one format. Maybe it's just like a big, uh, like an annual report. Um, and I want to take the data from that and some table data and put it into something that I could then import into Excel. So convert it from what's essentially a screenshot of a table and put it into a CSV format. Um, I can give it an example of what the structure of that data looks like uh, as the input and then uh, tell, show it how that example translates to what it is, the structure that I'm looking for. And then I can take all the different sources of information that's structured the same way from my source and paste them one by one into my conversation and it'll generate the value structured the way that I want. Um, this is a huge, even, even for those who are used to using um, macros and stuff in like a text editor or, a, or a IDE, a developer environment for, uh, uh, for coding. Um, this is faster, it's more efficient, uh, and it's, it tends to get it just as right as if I wrote the rules using regular expressions and, and you know, all the sort of technical pattern matching uh, tools that developers have. Again, just to kind of wrap a bow on the example, example templates, um, here's some examples of what a template could look like. So this is what I have. I want for an image template. It should have your prompt, the size of the image, and the number of images generated. Uh, text prompt is more simple. I just want to get a straight text response. So here's my text prompt, and it's in a plain text. Uh, and then memory storage, so I can store it in YAML. So I've got I can have a series of projects, each with their own set of names, goals, stakeholders, milestones, deadlines. Nice way to sort of structure uh, to store structured data. Um, YAML is sort of like a even simpler syntax than something like JSON. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about all I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, so I'll wrap it up here. Um, I will come back with another video um, that goes sort of walks through a real world example when I talk about my own project. But I just kind of wanted to share a my current best practices of how I'm using ChatGPT to really be a power user. Uh, and you know some of the limitations of uh, and features that are available on the ChatGPT Plus application. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.